What's up guys, Sam Wicker here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create realistic gunshot smoke using fume effects. Now the end result is going to look something like this, which you can then composite on your own footage. And let me remind you that the project files are available for download at socrisymedia.com. Click this annotation or the link in the description. So here we are in 3ds Max, we want to create a particle system for our simulation. So we're just going to go to particle systems, PF source, we'll just drag that out into the viewport. And we'll change the icon type to circle and the diameter of 5. All right, and now we want to rotate this and we'll turn on angle snaps and we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And we just want to bring it up and then push it back. All right, so now we're going to head over to our particle view. And first thing we want to do is delete shape. And now if you scrub through the simulation, we can see that we just have all these particles being created and they're just going in a straight path and it's not what we want. What we want is just a burst of energy. So we're going to set our emit start to 1 and our emit stop to 2. And amount to about 300 particles. So now we just have a burst of particles being created in one frame. And they just shoot out. So we're going to change the speed to be a little faster, 430. And the variation to about 60. We'll leave the direction alone and we'll change the divergence to 70. So now we have the shape we want. If we scrub through, it's looking great, but they don't die out. They just go on forever. So what we need to do is add a delete modifier to the particle system. And we'll do it by age. And we'll just set it to one with a variation of two. So now if we play that back, it's just a quick burst of particles being created and they just die off. It's exactly what we need. So now we can create our fume effects grid, which is where our simulation will take place. So we'll just go ahead and click that and drag it out over our particle system. All right, now we want to add a particle source for fume effects and we'll drag that out in the viewport and we'll select our particle system. And we want to change the radius. And if we scale, if we zoom in here, we can see we want our radius to have the particles just start to overlap. And now we'll head back into the fume effect. Now we'll go to the fume effect settings. And first thing we want to do is add our particle source to the grid. Now we want to add a light to our scene. So just go ahead and add a standard target spot light. We'll just drag that out into our scene. And now we want to turn on shadows. We'll set it to V-Ray Shadow. And we want to make sure we turn on Atmosphere Shadows. That's very important for fume effects. So now I head back into the fume effects grid, add our light, and be sure to turn on multiple scattering before you do your final simulation, by the way. So now we want to save our output for our simulation. OK. And now we're just going to head back up and we see spacing. That's the resolution of our simulation. So if we lower this down, we can see that the render up to size goes up drastically once we get to the lower numbers. We're going to keep it just a nice number for testing. So now I'll scroll down to the simulation settings. We have time scale. We want this to just play back pretty quickly. So we're going to do 1.35. And we'll scroll down. We have turbulence. Don't overdo this, but it does help. So we'll just keep it a low number. We'll change the scale down to 5. And we'll continue scrolling down. We don't want to simulate fuel. This is just smoke. So we'll turn fuel off. And temperature buoyancy, we want to put that down to about 0.6. And that'll cause the smoke to stay in one place and not rise as quickly. And now we'll head over to our rendering tab. And we'll change the opacity of the smoke. Right now it's at 1. We're going to change it to 0.25. And be sure to turn on the cast shadows and receive shadow setting. All right, and we also want to add a wavelet turbulence extra detail, and that'll come into play later down the road. So we're just going to do a test simulation now. And we'll click simulate. You can see we're kind of getting where we want. 
uh, we've got the smoke plume coming out and you can rotate around it and see what we have. So that looks great and we're going to lower this value now and do our first simulation. And click simulate. All right, so the simulation is done. It looks great. Uh, we can play it back and watch it. But we can get a little more detail out of this since we add the wavelet setting. So we can go to wavelet simulation mode. And click go. And by default, this will double the resolution. Now it's done. We'll change our cache to wavelet. And you can see the resolution we got. So now we want to frame our simulation up for render have our smoke plume in the middle of the scene and we'll go to our render setup tab and we'll change the output size to HD 1080p active time segment and we'll turn on the V-Ray frame buffer and we'll head back over to the common tab scroll down and change our render output we'll call it just front to image sequence and we'll change it to open EXR. That's what I like to use for any 3D application. Save, okay, and we're gonna go. Click render. So the render just finished up. Now here we are in After Effects. We're gonna double click to import, click one of the images from our sequence, click open, and now that opens the image sequence. And now we can right click, interpret footage main, and change the frame rate. Choose 23.976, drag that out in a new composition. And we can scrub through and we can see what we just created. And we want to add motion blur. And we can do that with the Real Smart Motion Blur plugin. Uh, I definitely recommend you check this out. It's an awesome plugin. And we can scrub through. Now we have motion blur. Uh, we're also going to add a fast blur just to soften it up a little bit so it looks a little more realistic. And that looks great. So now we can play it back and we can look at it. It's looking awesome. So now we want to add it to our render queue to save it out as an asset that we can use in our other footage. So we'll choose QuickTime Format, PNG, OK, and change the channels to RGB plus alpha. Click OK. Choose the file destination. And then click Render. All right. So now we have a comp open with some footage. We have it tracked. I just linked it up to it and parented it. And as you can see, we have the stock footage in our scene. It's not looking too realistic now, but we can adjust all that. We can adjust the opacity, change about 75. Uh, we could also change the speed of it, we'll stretch it down 50%. And we can scrub through. And now we'll just go ahead and add a muzzle flare. This is from Action Essential. Drag that into our frame, drag it over. Change it on screen, transfer mode to screen. Cut it down to one frame, and we'll just duplicate it. Move our smoke over first. We'll just duplicate the muzzle flare and add blur to it to get some haze and glow. I'll just do that one more time, just get a little more spread out over a distance. All right. And now one more thing we want to do is select our smoke and just add a tint to make it less white. Very subtle, but it helps. All right, so now I can click RAM preview and check out the final result. All right, that's looking great. I hope this tutorial is helpful for you guys. If you have any questions or a tutorial suggestion, please leave them below or hit us up on our website or on Facebook or Twitter. And be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial.